Hello, my name is Bob Richards with Financial Matters. Today I'm going to be talking to you about an exciting plan that I think you're going to find of high interest. Why would you consider an equity index universal life insurance contract with all the many thousands of different kinds of investments that there are out there? And I must say here that not all life insurance plans are, are efficient. If you really worried about taxes, you think they're going to be going up and want to keep more of your money, then an equity index universal life insurance plan might be for you. After all, the very rich have tax advisors that help them with tax loopholes and strategies to reduce the taxes that they have to pay. The rest of us are being squeezed with taxes. We have a powerful tool in the EIUL, and as you will see, it might just be for you. My job is to help you reduce wealth transfers. Basically, wealth transfers fall into four main groups. You will see here in just a few minutes, money investments with new eyes. The way you pay for your home, other capital purchases and credit cards, the way you fund your retirement account, and the expensive in expenses of investment accounts, and of course, taxes. But wait a minute, Bob. What is wrong with qualified plans? Well, really not very much. Think about it this way. They do two things. They defer the tax. You have to pay them sometime in the future. But at what, what, at what tax bracket? They also deferred the tax calculation. And who knows which deductions we're going to have left when that future time rolls around. Think about it another way. The government gives us a small tax deferred break up front. We call that the seed. And then they tax us on everything at the end. We'll call that the crop. If you're not managing your taxes, then they're managing you. Understanding where wealth transfers occur in a mortgage or any capital purchase can prevent unnecessary losses. If you finance, you transfer interest to the lending institution for the privilege of using their money. If you pay cash, you save interest, but you lose interest also because that money no longer earns you interest. We're going to hit you with some famous quotes here. Who do you think said this? The most powerful force in the universe is compound interest. Any, any ideas? If you said Albert Einstein, you're right. Here's another quote. Rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. Who, th who do you think said that? Warren Buffett. Now here we have two great minds one in a mathematical genius and another an investment genius, and all the things we're going to be talking about today play into these two things. I'm going to cover some questions for you about the plan. What is a cap and a floor? How does a lock-in and reset work? How do we cut the returns in a plan? Guaranteed versus current illustrations. I'm going to explain those to you. We're going to talk about short-term liquidity for tax preferences. Are the insurance companies actually safe? And the, is the IUL too expensive? You will learn what makes this EIUL very exciting. First of all, we're going to talk to you about how the equity index life insurance policy looks. It comes with some very unique benefits. How would you like to have a plan that you could not lose your money? How would you like to also have a plan that would give you potential market gains? We're going to talk to you about lock-in and reset and how that works. I'm going to talk to you about fixed participating loans and collateral capabilities. How would you like to have a plan that you could earn 12% from the market and never less than 2%? The powerful advantage of the locking in the annual gains using the S&P 500 price index. We're going to start off this plan with $100,000 for both the S&P 500 and the EIUL. They both earn 10%. Now the value of both contracts are $110,000. The second year the market drops 10%. You can see the person who's in the market has lost $11,000. The person who's in the EIUL has locked in their gains for that year and they cannot lose it and the plan resets. But remember I said there's a 2% floor so they get a now worth $112,200. But the third year the market goes up 5%. The IUL is worth $117,800 and the market is only worth $103,900. That's a 13% spread or a total of $13,800 difference because of that lock-in. Let's look at it a different way, the annual reset and how it works. You notice here the S&P 500 is set at 940 level. It's $100,000.
the market drops. It drops to 650. But that 2% floor helps the person in the EIUL, but the person in the market, is, you know, has lost money. The IUL is now worth $102,000. The next year, the market goes up. But take a look at this. The person in the market has not back where they started two years prior to that. They're still behind the eight ball. But the person who's in the IUL has gained up to the 12% cap, and now their plan is worth over $114,200. Now we're going to take a look at one of our many calculators that we work with people with. If you notice in the first column after the years, and this is a 15 year look back of the S&P 500, you see some negative years in there, they're marked in red. And then you see the account values in the next column. The third column over is the rate of return on the IUL, 12% maximum, 2% floor. You see the account values in the last column. What I'd like for you to notice here is the market actually averaged 2.6% and the IUL earned 7.2% as an average. I'd like to point out to you that the market only had a gain of $46,900 and the IUL had a gain of $183,600. But again, we can ask myself the question, Bob, there are no dividends in this. That's correct. However, I want you to pay Close attention to the $183,600 number and remember that. And I'd also like to state here that this ignores taxes, fees, and expenses on both sides. Now we're going to look at the S&P 500 total return. We're now adding in the dividends and the capital gains into the, into the plan. And those gains now for the S&P 500 only total a little over $94,400. And again, we have no taxes being paid, fees or loads being charged. And still the 94,400 does not catch up with $183,600 in the IUL. So where are we getting that 7% crediting that we're placing in our plans for you to look at? Here's another one of our calculators. You notice here, this is a look back over 30 year period. The, the first product here is a zero floor with a 14% cap and the second one is that 2% floor with a 12% cap. And in here, we have this tw uh, 15, 20, and 25 year and 30 year rolling actual returns. We have the actual in the first level, the best, and the worst. And you see here, I've circled the worst at 6.9 in the 0 to 14 plan and 7.06 in the uh, other one, if you notice in the second plan, that's the 2% floor with the 12% cap, and the worst 30-year period was over 7.06% return. So why would you might think about considering the IUL when you look at the S&P 500? The author, Edler Winslow, wrote a book called Fl Blind Faith. His research states 96% of professionals brokers do worse than the S&P 500 price index. So this is why I favor the IULs. If Winslow is right, then why not move money into a protected plan that you cannot lose money that is linked to the S&P 500 price index? We're gonna to talk to you about comparing the guaranteed versus current columns and also the cost of an EIUL versus a non-qualified investment plans. I'm gonna cover the guaranteed versus current cost of insurance, the guaranteed versus current crediting rates, adjusting the death benefit, and the fixed account crediting versus the index crediting. The current assumptions, I'm going to make them as simple as possible. The current cost of insurance and death benefit must meet the guidelines, and they fall under the laws of DEFRA, TEFRA, and TAMRA. The guaranteed death benefit could be lowered, but we're not allowed to illustrate this. We must illustrate the guaranteed and current death benefits exactly the same. If the insurance company should increase the current cost of insurance, we can offset this by lowering the death benefit by the same percent. This will allow the policy to not violate the modified endowment contract rules. By lowering the face amount, this will allow the policy to perform as a maximum efficient contract. Although this could happen, it has never happened. This is a guaranteed page of one of our illustrations. You notice here what's happening. You've got the premiums going in and things begin to happen as time progresses. But I want to also emphasize here that this is only guaranteed assumptions. And for this to happen, the guaranteed cost of insurance must be charged by the insurance company after the first month. 
There's no index crediting for the total 29 year period. The policy is funded as a five pay. There's no death benefit reduction after that first month. We don't move into the fixed account and we don't move to an, another indexing strategy. Although this is possible, but you can see why we would never let this happen and you see the circled area there at the bottom. Here's the current values and we notice here on the right hand upper side there, we're quoting a 7% current rate. In the first year, the, the premium went in. We do lose some liquidity that first year, but anytime you're moving from a taxable plan to a tax-free plan, you have to give up a little bit here or there. And you notice that first year, the values are, are less than the first year paid in. But look what happens the second year the premium is paid in. The values jump over that amount of the premium paid in. And by the fifth year, the approximate value is at or above the total amount paid in. In the 13th year, the law allows us to lower the death benefit and get it into what is called quarter. The quarter is the difference between the cash value and the death benefit. This area here is what makes the plan most tax efficient where your returns are actually much better. Now, posing for a moment, we're going to compare the safety of banks and insurance companies. Both banks and insurance companies operate on a fractional reserve system. Banks operate on a 4 to 10 percent reserve requirement and they're backed by the FDIC. What are the banks doing? Their tier one assets, that's their core reserves, consist of cash, treasury bills, precious metals, and oh my, permanent life insurance. This is bank owned life insurance. So why don't we do what the banks are doing? I have here listed five popular well-known banks and the middle column here has the cash values of those contracts in the billions of dollars. So in summary, banks typically reserve 10% or less of their assets. Bank-owned life insurance is one of the fastest growing assets for banks and their tier one money. The tier one money is their safest money. And there's the source where that information comes from. So you have to ask yourself this question. Why are the banks storing their reserves in permanent life insurance and telling us to put our money in the bank. The actuary reserves, I'm going to explain that to you. The states regulate insurers and they're required to reserve assets of 100% to pay for future liabilities. The insurance carrier's actuary reserve requirement is based on future obligations. This 100% reserving is a higher standard than the 4 to 10% of deposits that the FDIC requires. Here's another good question for you. I've always heard that life insurance is really expensive. Life insurance is expensive, but compared to what? You should compare it fairly with any other options, including all related expenses. That could be taxation on the investment, loads on investment and trading fees, management fees, and term insurance costs. You know that old saying, buy term and invest the difference? You gotta calculate that in there too. Here's a page from our, one of our illustrations that talks about all the costs within the insurance plan. If you notice here, after 12 years, the total cost and expenses in that insurance plan are a little over $67,100. But look what happens when we drop it into quarter, the year 13, it drops to $461. That's based on a value of over $302,800 or 15 basis points. Now we're going to look at our calculator again at the investment side and we're going to be talking about a good rate of return of eight and a half percent. I'm sure a lot of you folks out there really like to get that eight and a half percent every year, but you know that won't happen in the market, but we're giving it to you anyway. We're going to, going to be talking about a management fee of one half a percent and I'd be really surprised if anybody is not paying more than one to two percent for management fees. We're going to include a 25 percent ordinary tax rate. If you notice the columns here, we have the $40,000 a year premiums going in. The next column is the management fees. Then you see the rate of return of 8.5% I mentioned, the years, and then the ordinary taxes that are being paid on the returns, and then the accumulations as they go forward. The total for that 12-year period in management fees is over $14,200. So don't let anybody tell you that some types of plans are more expensive than others. And here's the taxes for those total year, 12 years, $55,400 for a grand total 
of over $69,700. Goodness, that's higher than the life insurance was. But let's look what happens in that 13th year. The taxes and fees are over $9,400. So when we review those total costs, over the same period of time, 12 years, they're close to the same. In year 13, the taxable investment is $9,405. The permanent life insurance plan is now dropped to $461. And this spread continues to get larger with the compounding growth. A note here, this does not include investment loads, trading fees, or optional term insurance costs. And I'd also like to add that if you're in a retirement plan, you still have to pay the taxes. How many of these benefits do you want? Back in the 1980s, the federal government passed the laws that I mentioned to you earlier that involved the new IRAs, 401ks, SEP plans, and 4B plans that were established during those years. They did put some regulations on the life insurance too, and they call, fall under what we call a modified endowment contract. And what we do with our plans is we stay under the rules so that it's, it's legal and gives you those tax-free and tax-qualified uh, benefits that you don't get in other plans. As you look down, you see the word term insurance. That only provides a death benefit. But as we bring the premium dollars going into the plan up toward that modified endowment guideline, you notice more benefits being added in with the green arrows that are pointing up. How would you like to plan, have a plan that provided you with tax deferred growth, tax free distributions, competitive returns, you can make high contributions, there are additional benefits that can be added such as family riders, you have collateral opportunities and I'll speak to those in just a few minutes, it's a safe harbor with no loss provisions, the banks really like that. You have guaranteed loan options. Again, I'll talk about that near the end. Unstructured loan payments. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. And having full liquidity use and control of your money. Here's a good question for you. With the government placing laws on permanent life insurance, what is that saying to you? It must be good. Here's some additional benefits that may be picked up in the IUL. It can, in some cases, help reduce Social Security uh, taxation because distributions from IULs are not considered income, can in some cases help reduce exposure to that new 3.8% health care surtax that's been imposed on us as another tax. For more information, you can talk to me about that, and of course we need for you to talk to your tax advisor. I'm going to show you now how to capture opportunities, capture market momentum, get uninterrupted compounding, and also doing this while protecting your contract values. Let's go to the whiteboard and I'll show you some exciting ways to utilize this plan. What I'd like to share with you now are some exciting things that are in the IUL that you've probably never heard before. People need to understand when you put money into a plan like this, you, have, you still maintain your liquidity use and control. So stepping over to the board, We've got opportunities that may come along, and we've got the cash values in your insurance contract. Let's suppose a plan has $300,000 of value accessible by you, for you, for opportunities that may come along. We all are very aware of what CDs are doing. They're not very good right now, but let's suppose that in the future, rates started going up with inflation, and you could get a 10% return on your money. Well, you could simply borrow, not from your plan, but from the insurance company, and put your money in that 10% return. Now, here's how the fixed rate of interest that's being charged works versus what your money might be earning. Remember I told you, we, we figured that you could probably earn 7% in your plan? Well, the insurance company has a fixed rate guarantee for the life of the contract that charges 5.3%. So when you subtract one from the other, you're making, because your money stays in the IUL, you're borrowing from the insurance company at 5.3, you're making a spread here of 1.7% on those dollars, plus the 10% you're making over here for a total return of 11.7%. Now I know there are a lot of folks out there that like real estate. Let's suppose an opportunity to come along to flip a house, buy and fix it up and flip it. You can borrow from the insurance company, and we're going to go to real estate. 
And let's say you could make 15 to 20% on your money. I don't think it's unrealistic. So over here, you're still making this 1.7% on the borrowed funds as a spread, plus the 15 or 20% on your, on your uh, real estate investment. And that is added together and you're making more money. This is showing you a way to make your money work for you twice. Now I promised you something very exciting and here it is. Suppose the plan offered you, we're gonna draw a little graph here. This is 0% down here. And you could earn 100% of the S&P 500 with just a 2% spread. Subtract it from that. So if you made 20%, you'd be credited with 18. Now, the insurance company has a contract with another company who's gonna manage this, and they're gonna have the ability to move money back and forth between a bond fund, a bond index fund. And as we all may know, when the market is doing very good, it's better to be in the S&P 500. Remember, Winslow said if if you're in an S&P 500 index plan, you might be doing 96% better than all the brokers out there who are taking care of your money. Now, if the market goes down, they have the ability to shift the money into the bond fund because when the markets are doing bad, we know that bond funds tend to do a little better. So they have the ability to move money back and forth to take advantage of market conditions and opportunities that may come along. You have an advantage here, and so does your plan. The annuities I offer have the same market index strategy. There are reasons why an annuity might be a fit. It could be your health, your age, and qualified retirement plans are just a few. The key to this is to get the market gains and never lose money. However, the spread on this plan that I'm about to share with you is only 1.5%. In my opinion, annuities are as good as any pension, and I've listed here the annuity, an employer pension, and also 401ks, IRAs, SEPs, and 403Bs, and, all, and a myriad of different kind of retirement plans that may be out there. Which ones are guaranteed for life? The annuity, yes. The employer pension, yes. The others, no. They have increasing income, yes for the annuity, yes or no, only a yes with cost of living adjustments, and under the others, you can run out of money if you take out too much. Guaranteed payments when the account is out of money. The annuity, yes. The pension, yes. And the 401ks and IRAs and other plans, no. Those that have optional benefits for increasing for nursing home use, hospital and assisted living facilities, yes for the annuity, no for the employer pension, and yes for the private plans, but they can run out of money. Payments to surviving spouses, yes for the annuity, yes for the employer pension, and yes for the others, but they can run out of money. Low or no expenses, yes for the annuity, yes for the employer pension, and no for the 401ks and IRAs, unless maybe they're in something like CDs or money markets or government bonds. The cash balances to the beneficiary, yes for the annuity, no for the pension, and yes for the other plans. A guarantee with no principal loss provisions. Yes with the annuity, yes with the employer pension, and no for the others. I'm at the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something today. I look forward to talking to you if you have further questions. You have my address and you have my cell phone number. Please reach out to me. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you.